तो फ्रेंड्स वी शेल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेयर वी हैव लेफ्ट इन द लास्ट वीडियो लास्ट टाइम वी हैव डिस्कस प्रिंसिपल ऑफ मूवमेंट्स आई टोल्ड यू आई डू यू आई डू डूइंग इट अगेन बिफोर दैट आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग यू कपिल कपिल मींस जोड़वा जोड़ा कपिल क्या होता है जोड़ा टू फोर्सेस देयर आर टू फोर्सेस दैट आर एक्टिंग we always see that there are two forces that that are acting in pair force rarely act single handed it is always acting in pair like for example i have bought this box and i have to open the lid of this box so what i do i am exerting force i am exerting force what are the points what are the things that are exerting force the thumb and the finger the thumb and the finger is used to open the lid of the box or when you are opening the lock key when you are rotating the key you are pressing the key with both the thumb and the finger similarly when we are holding the steering of a car or any handle you are exerting force in the same direction isn't it so there are two forces the right hand and the left hand both are making the steering wheel rotate about the axle okay now understand here we have a lever a uh, suppose a meter scale that is pivoted at the center okay the center i will mark as o a and b there are two forces that are acting one in the downward direction and other one in the Upward direction. These two forces are equal and opposite. They are equal in magnitude and are also separated by the same distance. Okay, O A and O B. O is the center point. So O A and O B. Now these forces will produce torque. Let us see the direction of the torque produced. Direction of the torque produced by the force F is in the anti clockwise direction okay and what about this force this force will also move about the pivot here this is the pivot so it will move the body in this direction this is again in anti clockwise direction since both the forces are making the body move in the same direction their movement of force will be added up okay let us derive the formula for this torque is equal to force f into oa plus force f into ob we take f common here in that it oa plus ob now what is oa plus ob it is f into ab and what is ab ab is the distance between the two forces is it clear so what is torque torque is equal to force into perpendicular distance or distance between the two parallel forces is it clear so torque is f into b b either one of the forces and the distance between the two force this is kapil unit again we look at the unit since it is torque the unit remains the same Unit is as a unit is Newton meter. Okay. The next topic is equilibrium of bodies. What do you mean by equilibrium? When the resultant of all the forces acting on a body is zero, the body is in the state of rest. or it is moving with the with a constant velocity then it is said to be in equilibrium so for a body to be in equilibrium all the forces the sum of all the forces should be equal to zero first thing and the second most important condition the resultant of the algebraic sum of all the moments should about a fixed point should be zero so there are two important condition forces all forces should be zero all force together should be zero together equal to zero okay or 
sigma f is equal to c. Second, the algebraic sum. Algebraic means with along with the sign, positive or negative. Algebraic sum of torque tau should be equal to zero. That is, sum of clockwise movement should be equal to sum of anti-clockwise movement. If these two conditions are fulfilled, then the body is said to be in equilibrium. Is it clear? So these are the two important conditions for a body to be in equilibrium. Whether the body is in state of motion or in the state of rest. That is static equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium. These two conditions should always be fulfilled. We will start with static equilibrium. Suppose a book is being placed over a table. I am giving you an example. What are the forces acting on the table, on the book? One, the weight that is acting in the downward direction, that is mg. And an equal and opposite reaction force that is acting in the upward direction. That is why we find that the book keep on lying over the table. So it is at rest. This is an example of static equilibrium. Same way, if I start pulling this force by the force F and another person pulls the same book with the same equal and opposite force, where will the book go? It will not move. That is what is happening in the wall. The two forces are equal and in opposite direction, the body will again remain at rest. So, we can see that all the forces that are acting upward is balancing the downward force, left force is being balanced by the right force. These are the examples of static equilibrium. Then we have an example of dynamic equilibrium. Dynamic means motion. Can we have a motion without any force being exerted? Isn't it? We are talking about dynamic. Second, dynamic. It is important to understand this dynamic equilibrium. Okay, we have already stated in the conditions for the equilibrium, force should be zero. Force should be equal to zero. And what is force? Force is equal to mass into acceleration should be equal to zero. Mass can never be zero. You know that mass can never be zero. Then what should be zero? Acceleration should be zero. So, if a body moves continuously with constant velocity, then the body is said to be in dynamic equilibrium. Is it clear? If the body continues to move in any direction, with a constant velocity that it is said to be in dynamic equilibrium. I will give you an example. We have the rain drops. When the rain drop come, start coming from the sky, they come initially with a force, they are with an increasing speed. And as they come down, there is an opposing force that is the viscous drag that keeps on increasing over them. A state is reached where the upward viscous drag and downward weight of the body becomes equal. After that, the rain drop comes down with the constant velocity. Is it clear? Otherwise, what would have been the, what, what would be the result of the rain drop? If the rain drops are coming from 5 kilometers high, then they would have acted like a bullet if they were not moving with a constant velocity. Is it clear? Then we have another example of equilibrium. That is dynamic equilibrium. That is also the verification of principle of movements. I will give you an example. A beam balance. All of you must have seen a beam balance. When you go to the market, you must have seen the beam balance. There are two pairs on the beam balance. And you can see that it keeps on turning this way or that way. That is the clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction. So that is based on the 
dynamic equilibrium once both the pans are balanced then the bar is horizontal okay so this is a very important point principle of verification of movements is it clear actually have principle of movements principle of movement is sum of clockwise movement equal to sum of anti clockwise movement we'll verify this principle we have a meter scale 0 to 100 cm it is pivoted at the midpoint that is at 50 cm mark i hang a weight here w1 w1 at a distance l1 and another weight w2 at a distance L. Okay. Now, what will the weight is at this point, and this is the fulcrum. So the body will move in this direction. This is anti-clockwise direction, and W two force will make the body move in a clockwise direction. This is clockwise direction. A condition will be arrived where the bar will become horizontal. At this condition, the clockwise movement should be equal to anti-clockwise movement. That is, W1, the weight of the body that is hang between 0 and 50 mark, and the distance from the pivot L1, L1, should be equal to W2 into L2. Okay. So L1 should be equal to W1 into L1, which is anti-clockwise movement, and W2 into L2, which is clockwise movement, should be equal. Then only the bar will become horizontal. They are in the equilibrium condition. There are a lot of numericals given in your book. We can change into a numerical also if you one numerical I will solve for, for you. Suppose W1 that is hanging at a distance. Let us take this W1 equal to 4 kg and L1 distance equal to 20 cm and W2 equal to 2 kg. What should be L2? Isn't it? What should be the L2? Yes, we should place 2 kg weight to make the bar in equilibrium position. So let us put the values here. W1 is 4 kg. 4 kg into 2. 4 kg into 20 centimeter equal to 2 kg into L2. So kg, kg cancelled out. 2, 2, L2 equal to 40 centimeter mark from midpoint. Midpoint. Is it clear? So the distance, this distance L2 should be placed at a distance of 40 centimeter from the midpoint. Is it clear? So basically, you are getting many questions, many numericals on this. You can try those numericals. Keeping in mind that if the rod that is being placed on the fulcrum should be uniform, okay, it should be uniform. Is it clear? I hope that you will do the numericals. Thank you.